The 2.5-mile Donington Grand Prix circuit is the scene of the second FIA World Cup, the jewel in the crown of worldwide touring car racing. 42 starters from 13 countries in cars from 11 different manufacturers. And despite the cold, a massive enthusiastic crowd thanks to the enormous success of the British Touring Car Championship. The man to beat is the reigning champion, New Zealander Paul Radisic, who, in his Ford Mondeo, blew everybody away at Monza last year, brilliantly to win the inaugural championship. And the cream of the world's touring car drivers are here to try. British superstar Steve Soper in his BMW, this year's British champion, Italy's Gabriele Tarquini, from Scotland, John Cleland, a Vauxhall Cavalier, Tim Harvey, Renault Laguna, Italian champion Emanuele Pirro, Audi 80, Switzerland's Alain Menu, Anthony Reid, Vauxhall Cavalier, Stefano Modena from Italy, Germany's Frank Biela, Frenchman Ivan Muller, and the German BMW ace Joachim Winkelhock. So, all set. Freddy Seat in pole position, Sofa second, Tarquini third, Cleland fourth. Watch the lights. Red, green, go. Cleland on the right alongside Sofa from row two. Terrific start. Down to Redgate. Here they come. And there's a collision in the middle. Several collisions. And two of them were O'Dor and, and Leslie off to the right. At Redgate, it's Cleland leading. Freddy Seat second, Sofa's third. Piro's fourth. In the now we're with Tarquini, down to the crane of curves at 130 miles an hour. That's Anthony Reid ahead, eighth on the grid. Tarquini passed him, up to Pirro in fourth position. Round old hairpin, and that's one of the crashers. It's Frenchman Philippe Gash, and it, it, it's Odor again. 35 is the South African, Sean van der Linde and the McLean's. It's Cleland. We're with Radisic now, second. Cleland is leading. Superb start, out of coppice at 95 miles an hour, down the Starkey Street, it's 140 miles an hour here, down to the S's, second gear, 50 miles an hour, hard on the brakes, Clennon leads, ready seats, Sofa, Piro, Tarquini is fifth in the Alfa Romeo, down to the Melbourne hairpin, and now we're with Alan Menu in the Renault, chasing Frank Bielis Audi, about 120 miles an hour here on the brakes, bang, he's, he's hit Biela, off he goes, into the gravel trap, that's the end of Alain's race. Well, off go the switch in, oh, it looks like the end of Alain's car if he doesn't move quickly. Flames, flames licking up now, where are the fire marshals? Menu getting out of the car in a pretty leisurely fashion, I don't think he realises it's on fire. Second in the British Touring Car Championship this year. Ah, here we are. Out goes the fire. Off goes menu. And out go the red flags. So it's the end of the race. That's O'Dor's Nissan. Goodness knows how many of those have been written off this season. The grid's reforming in the background. That's Gash and van der Linde walking in. Now here's a replay. Look for that collision in the middle. There it is, it started, two Ford Mondeos involved, O'Dor, van der Linde's BMW, O'Dor goes across, hits Leslie's Renault, which has only just started, pushes it into the pit exit. This is a replay from Lammers' Volvo. On the right is O'Dor. Lammers accelerates hard, passes the Nissan. Gravit's been hit on the left. Lammers is off, he's onto the slippery grass. He's going to hit the wall. He does hit the wall. Carry straight on over the circuit, into the gravel trap, out of the race. Well, that didn't last very long for the Dutchman. There's his Volvo being pulled off. They're going to restart the race, of course. O'Dor's Nissan, Leslie's Renault, and Menu's Renault. Two of the three Renaults out of the race. Green flag for the restart. Now, red light, red is each pole. So Tarquini, Cleland, Harvey, Pirro is the order on the grid. Away they go. Sofa nosing ahead in the middle in the white BMW. There's an Audi on the left, on the grass. I think it's Hans Stuck down to Redgate. Ready seat, Sofa, Cleland, Tarquini and Pirro all together. We're with Cleland now. Ready seat ahead of him, Sofa ahead of him. Cleland in third position then. Fourth position now because there's Tarquini going through on the right. Down to the old hairpin at 130 miles an hour. 
so Paul Radisic leading this time in the Ford Mondeo, Super BMW, Tarquini, Alfa Romeo, Cleland, and now we're with Tarquini. That's Steve Soper ahead. Ahead of him is Radisic. Out of the old hairpin, up to McLean's. Round they go, up to Coppice. And it's a Ford leading, BMW second, Alfa Romeo third, Vauxhall fourth, Audi in fifth position. Where we Tarquini, third place. He's coming up, he's tackling Steve Soper on the left as they go down the fastest part of the course. Down to the S's, they're gonna, they're gonna have to change down to second gear here. It's still Randy Seach leading, Soper holds that second place. Tire smoke, it's Modena, Stefano Modena, and he's hit Reed Vauxhall. But Cleland's going through to third position ahead of Tarquini. Down to the Melbourne loop. So, on Soper. And that's Piro going through. Piro, marvellous. Emanuele Piro in the Audi. Passes Tarquini. He's passing Cleland in the Vauxhall on the left. Cleland holds the position. Does he? Brakes go on. And Tarquini's going through. And straight on, off the course, onto the grass. Incredible. Oh, out of Goddard is Ruddy Seats leading, Soper second. Now there's a new third place man, it's Tim Harvey, and that's Stefano Modena, ex Grand Prix driver, very battered Alfa Romeo, walking away looking very dejected and understandably so. And John Cleland has stopped, and that's Piro. So now two of Italy's five man team are out of the race, and into the pits comes Tim Harvey. Now he was third, he's obviously out of the race, smoke at the front says to me he's got a major engine problem and here is the leader approaching the Melbourne hairpin, Radisic. You can see how close Steve Soper is. There is Frank Biela in third position, Winklehock is fourth and on the left, Ravaglia and Muller. Muller going through into fifth position, right behind them is Tarquini in the Alfa Romeo. Up to Goddard. Ravaglia turns in, Muller behind him. Here they are, starting another lap, down to Redgate. Radisic, Sopa, Biela, Winklehock, Ravaglia. With his lights on is Ivan Muller, the Frenchman. Both in BMWs, they turn in, round Redgate, into the Craner curves again. Tarquini closing up, now we're with Tarquini. It's Muller ahead, Ravaglia ahead of him. Now let's see how the Alfa Romeo goes compared with the two BMWs. Down to the old hairpin, and Muller locks up his tyres. Chasing Ravaglia, up towards McLean's. Back again with Tarquini, he's attacking Muller. Muller has a look at Ravaglia. Into McLean's the right-hander again, up to Coppice. Tremendously close, and you can see that Tarquini's getting closer all the time. He's right up behind the two BMWs. He's made an enormous amount of distance up on them. He's really got the bit between his teeth, we're with him. Muller is going for Ravaglia. Ravaglia has to drift wide. Muller's got the tighter line. He's got more momentum. He goes past Ravaglia up into fifth position. Tarquini's having a go at both of them. Goes through on the inside of the S's. And he goes through inside Ravaglia. And Ravaglia's overbraked. And he dropped back places. So Tarquini is now up into fifth position. And there is Winklehock fourth. Here's the Alfa Romeo fifth. Muller is in sixth position. With Tarquini, eight times a winner of the British Championship this year, British champion this year. Now, he goes past Burvid. Can he catch Winklehock's BMW? Can he catch Beeler's Audi? Got on. That's the Audi versus the BMW. Two Germans, Beeler, Winklehock. Tarquini's got his lights on, he's telling them I'm coming. I'm trying, I'm trying, never give up. Redgate, third, fourth, fifth. Now Tarquini's turned his lights out. Back again. Sadly, Gabriele Tarquini will not be racing in Britain in 1995. He's going to be in the French Championship indeed, and we'll miss him. Down to the old hairpin. There's Biela, Winklehock and Tarquini. This is the race because Radisic is holding the lead from Steve Soper, seemingly without too much trouble, as the battle for third comes up to McLean's. Got to get the line right here, and I notice that Winklehock closes up a bit, and they're pulling away a little from Tarquini.
as we ride with the British champion of 1993, Joachim Winklehock. Oh, and somebody off. Can't see who it is, but down towards us, down to the S's, there's Randy Seeks, there's Super. Here's the battle for third, as whoever it was went off, pulls off onto the grass. Oh, it's, uh, it's Bernard Thuna in his Peugeot from Switzerland. But meantime, it really does look as though it's going to be a double for Paul Randy Seeks. What a coup. There is Steve Soper, he's not making anything up at all. Third, fourth, fifth, now they really are closing up. We're with Gabriele Tarquini and tries he may, he doesn't seem to be able to make anything up on the two cars ahead of him. But it's good to see Gabriele here as a member of the Italian team because he made himself very unpopular with the Italian Federation by saying that in his opinion the British Touring Car Championship was the best of the lot. Well, I suppose as British champion, he probably would say that. And he's trying now. Look, now there is the battle ahead of him. That's Biela. That is Winklehock. There is Tarquini. And out of the race, Anthony Reid in the box are all the way from Japan to represent Britain. But remember, he was hit by Modena at the S's, and that's the result of it. And Randy Seach here in the Blue Mondeo is almost lapping Martel's Nissan. The gap to Soper is three seconds. The gap to Biela from Soper is another three seconds. Into the S's they go. So we're with Radisic snapping Bartels Nissan. It's a great race for the 32-year-old New Zealander. He won last year, in effect, world champion, third in the British Touring Car Championship this year. But this is the pinnacle. And he's hoping to test drive for the Benetton Formula One team later on. Redgate. Gila, Winklehop, Tarquini. Behind them, incidentally, is Johnny Chicotto from Venezuela in the BMW in sixth position. As we rejoin Joachim Winklehop, fourth place, Biela ahead. Rainer curves, 130 miles an hour, slow down for the old hairpin, 85 miles an hour, accelerate up to 125 underneath Starkey's bridge, up towards McLean, the right-hander. And he's closing on the Audi, no doubt about it, he's going for it, he's going for it, locks up his tyres, just fails to get through. Yela shuts the door in time. But Joachim Winklehock is definitely close enough to his countrymen now to attack for third place, coming out of coppice. Now, it's a question of getting the line right here, letting the revs build up at the right point. And he's closing, no doubt about it. He's right on the boot lid of the Audi as they turn into the S's. And he's hit it! He's hit it! Biela goes off. Joachim Winklehock moves up. Tarquini moves up. Biela rejoins, but he's lost two places. He's down to fifth position. Now, Winklehock won't have done that on purpose, but Tarquini's taking advantage of the situation. He's trying to get that third place from Winklehock as they come out of the Melbourne loop. Climbing up towards Goddard. This is 120 miles an hour, but they slow down. This is a very tricky corner. Jerkin Winklehock turns in, shuts the door, accelerates away down to Ringgate. And here's a replay of Winklehock catching Biela. Now, you can see where Biela was hit by Alamenu earlier and he's been hit again. Pushed off. He accelerates instead of decelerates, goes onto the grass. Winklehock dives through behind him. Tarquini does the same thing. Here they are. Out of McLean's, Winklehock, Tarquini and Biela behind them in fifth position. Into Coppice. The Audi runs wide a little bit as they exit. Oh, he does run wide into the gravel trap. He's off and out. Obviously as a result of being hit not once but twice in the race. Look at Tarquini as we join him. Over the curves and the S's. Winklehock almost puts his wheels on the grass, over the crest again. And once more, Tarquini looks to the right, dodges to the left, and once again, Winklehock holds the line. They shall not pass. I'm certainly going to try, says Tarquini. But the BMW with the rear-wheel drive seems to have a better push out of the hairpin, up to Goddard. And this is the last lap. Paul Radisic leads, and it really does look as though he's going to do the double. Sofa there. Less than two and a half miles for Paul Radisic 
to make it the Touring Car World Cup in 1994 as well as 1993. Down to the old hairpin for the last time. Super second. Winklehock third, there he is. Is he going to stay ahead of Gabriele Tarquini? Well, whatever, with Winklehock third, Stuck fifth and Oesterreich eighth, it looks as though it's going to be Germany for the Nations Cup. Jerkin staying ahead at McLean's. Out of the corner with Tarquini. Now, this is his last chance to do something about getting that podium place as he comes up to Coppice. I don't think he can possibly do it because Jerkin's got the run. This is 130 miles an hour here, and sure enough, Jerkin gets ahead of Matthew Neal. Tarquini follows through, out of the S's, on two wheels again. Once again, Jerkin Winklehock pulls away on the run down to the loop. That's Slim Borgood's Mazda. If he gets in the way, it just may help Tarquini. But I'm sure, knowing Slim as I do, he'll move over. And Brady Seach is at the last corner. Paul Brady Seach, Ford Mondeo from New Zealand, wins the World Cup. So per second. So a magnificent second successive win for Paul Radisic and Ford with Soper and Winklehock second and third for BMW, Tarquini fourth for Alfa Romeo, Stuck fifth for Audi and Chicotto sixth for BMW. The jovial Tom Wheatcroft, the owner of Donington, presents the Crystal Bowl made in nearby Melbourne to a justifiably delighted Paul Radisic, who's ended the year on the highest possible note. With second, third and sixth places, BMW win the Manufacturer's Award. Six